Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Wix e-commerce workshop. Today, we're going to be talking to you about how to run a Halloween flash sale. I'm Liat, and I lead e-commerce marketing at Wix. Um, so I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. And joining me today is my colleague, Asaf. So if you want to say hi. Hi, everyone. Pleasure being here with you, Liat. Thank you, with you as well. So we have a bunch of team members from the e-commerce team in the chat with you guys. So please feel free to um, ask questions or interact in the chat. They'll be responding to you. Um, and as we proceed, I'll also be referencing some of your questions. So Asaf and I will pause every once in a while um, to bring up your questions and try and answer them as best we can. Um, we're going to give it a couple more minutes while we wait for people to join us. So in the meantime, we welcome you all to please share your store websites in the comments so we can get to know you better um, and your stores. And if you want to tell us where you're from in the world, that'll be great. We'd love to hear where all the store owners are joining us from today. So I see Lewis there from Buffalo, nice to see you. Wow, you guys are pumping them in quick. Um, I see we have Maryland, we have Queens, we have Canada, uh, New York City. So really exciting, Montreal. I see someone from England. I see someone from, wow, where was that one? I think from Cape Town, Victoria. Oh, we have somebody from India. So we really have sellers joining us from all around the world there. So get to know each other, take a look at everybody's websites. Um, I'll take this uh, opportunity to let you all know that we also have a Facebook group for our e-commerce community. So our team will be dropping the link there in the comments for you. So you can join that group if you like. Um, and we'll also be sharing all the links that we talk about at the end of the presentation today again. Um, we will be recording today's workshop. So if you missed anything or you wanna watch it again, don't worry, that'll be available to you. Um, we'll be emailing all of you the link to the recording and all of our workshop recordings are always available on the Wix e-commerce school website. So feel free to go ahead and, and visit the website. So Asaf, are you seeing any stores there in the comments that you know? There are too many of them for me to go one by one. Um, but it's always great um, to see so many <clears throat> of our store owners. And by the way, next week on Monday, we're going to do a storefront review on our Facebook page. Um, so you can leave uh, your store URL and we'll come back with expert tips on how to improve it. Uh, that's happening next Monday. Uh, but yet, I think the audience is ready for the, you know, for the main show of the evening. Sure. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now, um, and Asaf and I will get started. So in today's workshop, we're going to be talking about how to run a flash sale. Um, since Halloween is coming up, and we always love a good theme at marketing, uh, we decided we we're going to do. Halloween based flash sale, but uh, all of the tips and best practices here apply to any flash sale. So feel free to always reference these um, and to apply it to whatever flash sale works for your brand or business. So let's talk a little bit about what we'll be covering today. So we'll go from the very beginning of planning your flash sale and getting ready. Um, and then walk you through step by step about how you create your coupons, how you update your online store website, um, how you're doing promotion on your different marketing channels, including email and social, um, how to create some great videos for use, um, and then finally, how to track and measure your results. Um, and Asaf is going to be demoing for us today. So no pressure there, Asaf, live demos um, are always fun. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about flash sales. So we wanted to share some data with you guys based on our network of over 500,000 selling stores around the world. Um, so of our e-commerce merchants who ran flash sales this year in 2020 
On average, they saw an increase in their monthly revenues of over 64,000%. So that is really amazing. Um, and we hope that more of you are able to enjoy that kind of growth for your business. Um, so without further ado, let's dive on in uh, and help you guys get ready for your uh, successful flash sales. So the very, very first thing that you need to remember with a flash sale, as opposed to any other regular sale, um, is that you really want to create a sense of urgency to boost sales quickly. It's called a flash sale for a reason. It happens quickly. Um, typically, we're talking 24 to 48 hours. Um, so you really want to create a great offer and a sense of urgency and then pump that out to your potential shoppers to get them buying um, and driving up those sales. So let's talk about how you're going to plan your flash sale. The first thing you should do is clearly define your target market. So you really want to think about what kind of customers you're trying to reach. So typically here we would say, are you trying to re-engage your existing customer base? So are you planning to reach out to customers who've already made a purchase from you in the past or who you have their subscriber info or maybe follow you on your social channels? Or are you trying to reach new customers, new shoppers? And then you're really going to be reaching out to new potential shoppers and thinking about ways to promote your sale and get that in front of them. There are two really, really important aspects for running any flash sale that kind of go hand in hand. And that is, what is the offer? So what are the products that you're putting on offer and how much are you offering them for? So that combination is critical. You wanna make sure that you're offering really your best ever sale, not your typical sales that you usually offer, right? You're giving an amazing offer, an amazing discount, an amazing price, on maybe specific products, maybe all of your products, maybe on products that don't usually go on sale, but think about how you're creating something that's really unique in value to your customers so that they're going to feel that sense of urgency to come in in that really tight window um, and enjoy that great deal. Um, then you wanna be thinking about your channels and defining um, a marketing budget that goes along with that. So your channels are really gonna depend on your target audience. Remember what we spoke about in the beginning. Are you trying to reach existing customers? Are you trying to reach new customers? Um, when we get to the section where we show you some um, channels you can use, we'll talk more about that. And then of course you want to be planning your timing really carefully. The timing of the sale itself, um, but also the timing of all of your marketing efforts, right? So, since you're gonna be selling in such a tight window, you need to make sure that you really time all of those marketing assets perfectly um, and have a lot of reminders along the way. So you're really building up that FOMO, that fear of missing out, that sense of urgency so that your shoppers are closing the deal. And then finally, we're gonna talk about how you create some of those marketing assets. So let's get started. Um, with the first part. Um, you need to decide what is the price or the discount that you're gonna be offering. Um, and the easiest way that you can do that is by creating a coupon for your offer. So you can offer um, discounts in many different ways. You can think about a hard dollar discount. You can think about a percentage discount. Maybe you also wanna offer free shipping. Maybe you want to create a unique price for a certain product that's only available during the sale. Or maybe you want to do a buy one, get one free kind of deal, or buy X, get Y free, however many you want to put in those kind of combos. So the good news is that you can create any of those um, with Wix coupons. Um, and the even better news is that Asaf is going to do that for you right now. Um, all right. So. Um... Let me share my screen for a second and we can uh, dive right in. So uh, for the sake of this workshop, we came up with a hip hip shop. It's, a, it's a, an online store that sells uh, wooden toys and creative toys for kids. That was uh, the concept we came up with. And now we'll dive 
into some of those things. So this is your dashboard on from your dashboard. Um, you can go to marketing tools here and, and go to coupons, sorry. One second, I'll just move the um, Zoom widget, which was there. And um, here in the coupons, you'll be able to see previous coupons that you've already made and, and you can reuse them or um, create a new one. So let's go with a new cup, uh, coupon. Uh, as Yad showed, we have um, five built in different kinds of coupons. I'll go with the discount, the percentage discount, which is my favorite one. And let's go with a uh, coupon code. Um, 2020. Um, it says that it's already exists because we just created it a few minutes ago. I'll just, for the sake of this quick uh, show, we'll go with 2023, uh, the discount, the percentage. Yeah, let's go with 50%. Let's be extremely generous. And that you know what? Let's apply. Very generous. Yes, yes. I'm a, uh, I'm a generous person. It is known. And let's go with, uh, with all products because when we run a flash sale, um, <clears throat> it's a great way to get people to shop for the first time. So let's do it for all products and apply it <clears throat> to uh, any item on the order. Now let's see uh, how on wh when is this coupon kicking into gear. Um, so let's start at Friday the 30th, add an end date, it automatically comes without, so be sure to add one. Once we add November 8th, we know we have our 48 hour window and we're gonna limit it to one use per customer because a 50% discount um, you know, doesn't leave a lot of profit margins. Um, so let's make sure to have uh, customers shopping only once. That's pretty much it. From here, you create a coupon <clears throat> and voila, we have here Halloween 2023. We have a similar one that we created before when we were testing everything. So um, we have it. You can also track some usage here quickly and easily to see. Um, obviously a coupon that's been created a minute ago is not gonna have any uses. Um, but obviously during those 48 hours, you will start seeing uh, the numbers piling up. Very cool. So I actually saw a couple of great questions um, here that I think we can address right now because they're regarding the discount. So the first one is from Annabella and she asked us, do you think um, it's okay for a luxury product from a niche brand um, to have a flash sale, I guess, without devaluing it? So on that one, Annabella, I'm gonna say, I think that when you're doing that planning and thinking about your discount, you have to have two things in mind, right? You have to really have that target audience in mind um, and then your brand and the value that you're bringing them. So um, maybe you don't want to give a percentage discount. Maybe you want to give a different benefit or you want to have um, a product that's only uh, um, available once in a while, so like a very specific product drop, or you wanna have it at like a special launch price. So if you're launching something new, you can offer um, a launch price, which obviously doesn't need to be extremely discounted if it's a niche luxury product. Maybe you just need to give like an attractive price for launch. So I don't think it necessarily devalues. I think you just need to think about what really stands out to your customers um, and gets them engaged and interested. Um, so that was one. And then I think I saw another one. Um, so um, I saw somebody asked, is there any way to allow customers to apply more than one coupon to a purchase? Yeah, so we can, um, <clears throat> let me just edit it so we can see it. <clears throat> So we can apply it only, I'm not 100% sure that I understood correctly the question, so I'll answer what I understood. We can apply it only to a specific item from you know a certain uh, amount of, so if people have like four things on their cart, we can apply it only to the <clears throat> lowest price item, or we can um, also limit the total numbers of usage for uh, this coupon specifically. Yeah, um, did I answer that? Yeah, I think, I think I understood the same thing as you. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and if not, we'll let the team um, pick it up in the chat with you guys. So um, I'm gonna take over the screen share again, Asa, so that we can uh, carry on with our presentation here. 
So now that we have um, our discount defined and we've set up our coupon, we're gonna go ahead and move on to updating the website. So of course, when you're running any kind of sale and certainly a flash sale, you really wanna make sure that you're highlighting your amazing promotion, your deal on your website's homepage. Um, or if you're choosing to use a dedicated landing page for the flash sale, that's fine, and then have the deal there. Um, but you really wanna make sure that it's very, very clear um, across the website and that you're also clearly communicating the coupon code. So this one, I can tell you, even as a shopper, is a pet peeve of mine. Um, I hate it when I go to the website and I have the coupon code and then I choose all the stuff that I want and I get the card and I'm like, where is the coupon code? Now I have to go looking for this thing. I know there was one. So make that easy for your customers. Don't lose a shopper over technicalities. Um, you can also think about adding some um, cool things to your website, like a countdown timer to really amp up the pressure um, and make it like a race against the clock. Um, you can easily add that. Um, we have an app in the Wix app market for that, so you can go ahead and add that to your website. Um, you definitely want to make it easy for customers to know what the expectation is regarding shipping, rates, and any other fees that you might have on the website. So. Don't surprise them with that information when they get to checkout. Um, again, you don't wanna lose sale over something like that. So make sure all that information is there on the website. And then the final one um, is really just best practice in general. But if you're doing a flash sale, this is definitely a great opportunity to make sure that you have this implemented um, on your website. So set up abandoned cart recovery automation. So what that means is anyone who's coming to your website and adding items to cart, but then for whatever reason, not closing the sale, um, will get a reminder email about what they left in their cart and hopefully bring them back to finish the purchase. So here, um, just a little bit of data for you guys. Um, based on our network um, of Wix stores, we see that sites that add abandoned cart recovery emails um, are able to increase sales by up to 29%. So that's a really, really great increase for you guys to enjoy. Um, and Asaf is also going to show you how to do that today. So you'll see how simple it is to set it up. Um, so Asaf, without further ado. Right. So um, back to the dashboard. Um, let's um, go back to the main menu. Uh, now that we have our coupon, we want to make sure it's on the website. So click on edit site. And you'll probably be able to see that we've already um, took some time to add a hello bar that communicates uh, the code. So you can see it here at the top. Took me about 15 minutes to do it. I just, we have so much on our plate today that I didn't want to do it in live. But in essence, um, you go to add and you add either a strip or something. I also made sure to add it um, to the net, to the header here. So when it, when you browse the different pages that we have, you will always have the code in front of you. And, and now that you, know, um, you can see my uh, design powers here, let's go and preview it. It's always best practice to see it before we click publish. And I think it came out pretty cool, yeah, right? I think it's so great. Um, like one of the things that always stresses me out when I need to update one of my websites um, is if I'm gonna mess up the design. Um, so I think you've done something relatively straightforward and simple with that bar, um, but it really grabs attention and it's doing the job, um, super functional, super convenient for the shoppers. So I think most of you should be able to do that pretty easily. So uh, follow us up to lead, uh, maybe take your spider if you like it. But I don't give out the spider that easily yet. I, I can sell it to them if they want. Um, however, one, once you're done with the, with the desktop version, now is the important part, which is the mobile version. So here, uh, once I switch to mobile view, um, you'll be able to see that the you know the coupon bar is actually not pixel perfect, um, and we need to play with it a little bit um, because most of your visitors are coming from mobile. And about 65% of all uh, shoppers on Wix um, are for mobile. So you definitely, definitely don't want to 
uh, publish the website. Before you fix it, how you fix it, you go back to the editor, you play with it a little bit. Um, what's cool about the Wix editor is that you can play with the mobile view without it impacting your desktop view. And I'll leave it for the time being here and go back um, to desktop, but definitely before you send out yours, be sure to go over the mobile one um, and, and have it uh, pixel perfect. Um, Yat, you also wanted me to show them, um, show our audience how to do uh, abandoned cart recovery. So it's here under customer management, we have automations, let's go there. And, and here you'll get some recommendations. You can do boost your uh, store sales. And, and if you haven't activated them, uh, you'll have it here. I'll show you the, the harder way. So um, choose a new automation and then choose Wix stores, which is you know what we want to apply here. And let's select the trigger when customers abandon a cart. And here um, is a good time to remind you all that four out of five carts remain abandoned forever. And that that you know that number is really a pain because you work so hard to get traffic into your online store, you strike a deal with a coupon, you engage them with great design, and then they start the purchase process and end up elsewhere. So uh, this is a great opportunity for you to increase your sales easily, relatively easily at least. Um, and everything that is automated, at least in my mind, Liat, is worth the effort of doing well because this is gonna live for a long time. And so once we, could, we, we chose a customer abandons a cart, let's go with send an email, and now um, the, the, the sender details are here. You can edit them obviously, and you can create your email. We won't go into this um, because I think you should invest a lot of time in your abandoned cart emails. They are very effective and they're a great way for you, uh, one, to get your brand um, exposed to people who have been there, left some details and then uh, you know went elsewhere. And also obviously to um, increase sales immediately. So be sure you, you have templates and you can preview and test to all of those things. Um, in terms of timing, many stores like to do it immediately. I like to give people some time to you know, reflect on how well they did in life before I remind them that they haven't done well because they uh, left an abandoned cart. Let's do it one hour after and obviously go with a better design and messaging for your store. Um, and let's not limit this. I love automations to run all the time. And uh, once we're done with that, we'll just click on activate. Let's call it new automation 2020. And in a minute, the automation is live, voila. So it's fairly simple, but do invest the time on that uh, email design and messaging because this is gonna live for a long time and visit it every once in a while. See if you can improve it with better design and better messaging. Very, very cool. I totally agree with you, Asaf, that that is well, well worth the investment and the effort. I mean, you did that pretty quickly, add on a little more time for making a beautiful email there, which is easy to do with our email tool um, and your set. So we got a couple of questions that I'll bring up. One was regarding the website and somebody asked us, um, how do I easily go back to my previous design um, from before the sale, once the sale is over. So um, on this one, I would say there's probably a couple of options. One is um, if you want to, you can duplicate the page um, or the website. Um, so you have a, a backup version if you like, if, if you feel like anything's going wrong. Um, and if you're going with like a simple design, like Asaf is showing you here, um, it's pretty easy to just remove in the editor and republish. So you can go either route um, on that. Um, hang on. I see that I'm not missing any questions. Okay, um, don't worry, the team will ping me uh, if we're missing any major questions and we'll be sure to answer them um, a little bit later. So uh, my final comment to you on updating the website with the offer is going to be, remember that once you go live with the offer on your website, your sale is officially launched. 
So you want to make sure that you're only hitting the publish button when you're really ready to go live with the sale. So I would say um, do everything that Asaf did in the editor, prepare that in advance, um, and then hit publish when you're ready to launch your sale. Okay, now we're moving on to the promotion and we're gonna start with email marketing. So um, a little bit of best practices, do's and don'ts um, before we get into it. So of course you only want to be emailing customers who gave you their permission to do that. Um, you definitely don't wanna upset your customers and actually end up driving them away or lose subscribers because you're um, emailing them unnecessarily. Um, and of course, we also want to mention that there are a lot of regulations around this, so you definitely want to be abiding by all necessary regulations. Um, another best practice is to only email active or engaged contacts. So I always recommend creating different groups of customers, and you can do that in the Wix um, email tool, as I will show it to you um, shortly. But create different groups of customers. Maybe you have customers who are less engaged, so you email them less often, but you email them with really attractive offers um, versus customers who are more engaged and maybe enjoy a more constant rate of email from you and more constant offers. So just be thoughtful about that and um, aware of your customers' preferences. And of course, you need to track and monitor every email to see how they're doing. So if you see certain emails are not working so well for you, or your customers engage with them less, then try something else or adjust whatever needs to be fixed. Um, of course, of course, make sure that whatever you're emailing about really provides value to your customers. So value can be in the deal itself, like the flash sale. So we're giving them a really great offer that they wanna enjoy. Um, but it could also be um, in terms of products similar to products that they typically enjoy from your business, or maybe you have a new collection um, that you really think that they would like to know about. So you can provide value in different ways. Um, and finally, always have a clear CTA. So that's a clear call to action um, in the email so people are able to immediately click through um, and shop your store. Um, Email like a pro. So here are a couple of tips when you're creating that email. Um, first of all, focus, focus on your subject line. We want it clear and short. Um, Asaf, we will shortly test your copywriting skills. Um, add some personalization for better engagement. So I always like a highly act in my inbox. Um, and schedule when to send emails so you're reaching your customers at the right time. So what is the right time? That's a really complicated question and it's different for every business. So what we suggest is that you go into your data and you look at your customer's shopping habits. When are they typically shopping? What day of week do they usually shop? What time of day do they usually shop? Um, think about what's convenient and most effective for them and then time your emails to meet your customer's preferences. And then finally, make sure that you're constantly optimizing those email lists. So create those filters for groups or labels. You can do that um, with the Wix tool. Um, if you're collecting new contacts, either in person at your brick and mortar store um, or via subscription list on different pages, then make sure that you're importing those so your lists are always up to date. Um, and we're, we won't be able to show this to you today, but maybe we'll show it in another workshop, but you can definitely go and read more about this um, in our different resources. If you want to grow your subscriber list, then make sure that you're adding a Wix form so people can subscribe to your email list um, from your website. Um, so, Asaf, would you like to show us um, how to create some great Halloween emails? Yes, absolutely. Uh, one, I personally really love emails. I think, uh, you know, they've been around, they've been with us for a long time and we uh, sort of like to look at new technology, uh, but in terms of direct marketing, email, especially for e-commerce is a super effective tool. Again, we'll go to the marketing and SEO tools and you'll see here email marketing. And what I really like about this within Wix with the Ascend Business Tools is uh, we, I already have some templates to start playing with. And so let's start with this cat because um, people like cats I hear on the internet. And um, 
and people also like pumpkins. So I think it's a, it's a good mixture here of animals and uh, things that um, people eat. And it comes built in with some with a template text. Um, read over it. You can change everything here, obviously. So the first thing you change um, is we don't want to find out more. We want shop now. Um, that's just me. And make sure, by the way, um, that you go with the right um, URL for your store. Uh, from experience, it works better when you send them the right place. Next, Liat, you wanted me to uh, work on my copywriting skill uh, skills here when everybody's looking at me. Um, we've got deals to make your hair stand out. How about 50% of of everything? Use coupon code Halloween. And, and we can also line break if you don't want. Um, it's, it's Not like bad this. stuff. Not bad. Thanks, yet. I've been practicing, uh, as you can see. Uh, anyways, obviously, like with everything, preview, test, uh, send it to people who's, who, who you value their opinion. Um, it's always great to have an extra set of eyes. There's more um, customization here um, for the sake of, of showing you some other cool um, tools to promote your flash sale will keep it at this and and let's go next so uh, we saw it a little bit on on your slides Liat. Um, let's go with everybody because i think everybody can appreciate a 50 percent off flash sale and everybody loves flash sales and if they don't then you know you should uh, unfriend them and block them and <laughs> and find Please, other people don't, yeah. don't do that that is not our recommendation <laughs> for this workshop yes uh, anyways um let's move into the the most important part so here you can have a preview on the left i think it looks pretty nice the subject line here is the most important thing because this is what's going to determine whether or not uh, potential shoppers are going to open and see your offer or not so make sure one that it's you know it's very clear what you're offering and two, we can add a dynamic value here. Um, so if I wanted to add, let's assume that we have the first name for everybody. So now it will say, John, treat yourself this Halloween with 50% um, of, of everything. Um, so this looks okay. However, you should uh, mind the sentence casing here and make sure it's pixel perfect. Uh, I haven't done it, but you definitely should. Now that everything is ready, we can either send a test email. I strongly recommend you do it before you send everybody. Um, we'll skip that stage and just schedule one. So um, like Liat said before, we should definitely start with reminders and, and, and letting people know this is coming. So um, you have this, you know, two more days here to work and then the weekend and then start reminding them that this is coming. I would probably do it for Monday. And, and later on in the week, you know, when you press that red button and get the flash sale going, make sure you send an email reminder that the, the flash sale is on. So let's go with 30th um, in terms of what time of day. Again, a lot has to do with the product. Is this something that people buy on their phone? Uh, when they're commuting, is this something that they need to be on their computer and you know do their research, see some comparables, uh, know your audience and know when to engage them. Let's go with uh, 9.49 p.m. Uh, for kids' toys, it's probably not the best time. And so we'll change it to a.m. That feels more uh, in line with the product that we're doing and that we're sending an offering and uh, everything is all set. The campaign is scheduled and we're all set and good to go. Again, if you want to edit, it's, it's um, everything is, is possible. It's not that, you know, once you schedule it, it's gone. So have the confidence in doing it and get some reviews, people you trust and uh, start your flash sale. Very cool. So I'll just go back to our presentation there. Um, Here's a little best practice that we gave you guys in terms of timing for emails for flash sales. 
So you want to bear in mind that we're working again with a very tight sale window um, of the 24 to 48 hours of sale. So you don't want to send the email too soon um, because obviously people won't be able to buy immediately. You do want to just get it going in their minds that um, a great sale and a great offer is coming. Maybe tease them with uh, make sure to be on the lookout um, for our awesome Halloween sale coming up. So our best practice for the tease would be 12 to 24 hours before launch, depending um, on your customers um, and how engaged they are with um, your emails and email content. Um, and then maybe do another reminder. So if you did the first one 24 hours before, um, um, uh, do another reminder. Um, and you always want to do a reminder before the end of the sale. So if your sale is running those full two days, make sure that you're sending out a reminder on the last day. Um, so any last minute shoppers or people who maybe missed the initial notifications um, can enjoy those. Do remember that email obviously um, takes a little time for people to respond. It's not the kind of thing that you send now and immediately your customers are coming in. It takes a little time to get sent out. Not everyone reads their email straight away. It might sit in their inbox. So you want to play around with those windows in a way that's effective um, for your customers, but definitely generating that awareness for them. Um, so from there, we're going to move on to some other marketing channels that you can use, and we're going to talk a little bit about social. Um, so here again, we're going to go back to those goals that we set right in the beginning um, for our flash sale and think about who exactly it is that we're trying to reach. So if the goal of your flash sale is really putting that flash sale out there, so you're getting to new shoppers and maybe generating awareness of your brand and your deals, um, then you want to be thinking about how you're going to be reaching those new shoppers. Like, are you going to target them based on lifestyle, or demographics, or behavior, all of those great um, targeting tools that you get from social networks? Um, you can also maybe think about targeting some of your competitors, Facebook or Twitter audiences, or products similar to your own or your brand. Um, that's another way of getting your product out there in front of um, relevant shoppers. Um, and if you are trying to drive brand awareness at the same time um, for some of your signature products, then make sure that you're featuring those products in the post itself. So you're really um, getting everyone to have a good look at your products um, that are going to be available in the sale. Um, if you're thinking about engaging with some of your existing customers, then you can definitely use your social channels for that too, especially if you have a strong following there um, on your different channels. So you can help win back inactive customers with a really enticing offer. And social channels are really, really good for building up that urgency and that FOMO. You can use them to launch the minute that your sale goes live. You can remind customers when time is running out in the final hours. So we definitely want to be using all of that um, to our advantage in our flash sale. Um, so I'll hand over to Asaf to show you how you can go ahead and create some of those. All right, so um, back to the dashboard. Um, Let's start from the main menu. This is what you're going to be seeing every day. Um, social posts are under marketing tools. Let's click on them and go and build a social post. Um, so just like with email marketing, here as well, Wix offers you some templates. Again, always good to explore uh, and choose from, but I'll go with today's picks. And, and, and nothing says Halloween more than like a haunted castle. Um, Let's see what are my options here. Um, I, um, I kind of like the trick or treat one. And, and let's add some text with a, let's go with a bold title. Um, so it's gonna be something like, what about something like this? Let's stretch it out a little bit and play with it and we can center it and probably in terms of contrast, it's gonna be better to go with white, um, even wider than that. And so let me just center this. This is clear enough. 
we have the context, the treat, uh, uh, trick or treat, and the castle. I think that's pretty clear. And we have the offering right in front of you. I think it's good enough for us to move forward. Let's go next. Yeah, I definitely see you're uh, honing your design skills there along with your copywriting and stuff. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's go with a short caption. So uh, if this is going on Facebook, it should be something that, you know, sort of fuses the visual stopping power that I just created here with something that people can really relate to on an emotional level. Let's go with something short, um, but very clear. And here I always uh, recommend to download the image and, and save it on your computer. One, you can go and look for inspiration for when you know the next Halloween hits and, and you won't remember exactly what you were doing. So it's always good to have it. Uh, and two, you can also use it for other channels as well. Uh, we'll go with Facebook. We have the caption, you can schedule it, but we'll share it now because uh, and that's what I feel like doing. And um, so let's share it now and see how that post looks like. And um, let's view it on Facebook. Again, we created a Facebook page specifically for this. And what do you know, it's here and looks exactly like the preview, which is a good thing. Um, gives me confidence to uh, put some money and post it and, and try to bring more audience um, into my store. One thing that is very, very important on social is uh, to remember that people are gonna comment, especially on flash sales. They're gonna have questions, um, they're gonna have comments. Some will leave um, reviews that uh, are good and some reviews that are not so good. Be sure to answer everybody in a way that shows um, your personality and uh, strengthen the, the confidence for people who don't know you that this is a trustworthy brand and we can go there research and then uh, enjoy the flash sale. Very, very cool. So some people were asking us about some best practices there. Um, and I think we're actually about to answer them for you guys uh, in the presentation. So we'll do this um, quickly. So first of all, in terms of timing here. So with social channels, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of timing. Um, so you can plan at least one 24 hours before launch to help build up again that sense of urgency. Um, here you can really time it to go live upon launch. So as the deal is going live on your website, um, schedule a post that's saying um, sale is live now, go and get it. Um, and then throughout the last hours um, of your sale, depending how things are going, um, you can keep pumping those out. So I would do a combination of the scheduled posts um, and then just kind of freestyle it based on um, whatever need you have as things are going. Um, somebody asked us about adding a coupon code to the post or to the caption. So that's definitely a best practice, but I wouldn't do it in the promo post right? Because you don't want to give the coupon before that deal is live on your site, because then people will try and use it and they could be frustrated if it's not working for them. So I would say promo posts, no coupon code, and then the launch posts and um, the pushing during the sale definitely have that coupon code um, on everything. So you're making it super, super easy um, for people to copy that and follow through um, and buy. Um, so People are asking um, if there's integration with uh, Instagram. So uh, yes, both in terms of your social posts um, as well as for doing um, tag products if you wanna sell products directly on Instagram. So team will share links for that um, in the chat with you guys. So while we're on the topic um, of social, Asaf, um, let's talk a little bit about video um, because I think it's definitely a great way to amp up your social game um, and really play around with your content. Um, they can be even more engaging, more effective. You definitely need to test what works well for your audience um, and you probably want to be going with a mix. So not only video posts, not only static posts, um, have a little bit of everything. Um, with Wix Video Maker, 
you can create videos for all of your social channels. You can download them um, and put them on your website if you want. So you can really get a lot of use um, out of these videos. Um, and I think it also really helps um, a brand to look super professional um, and like a big brand and retailer, right? So videos are typically big budget um, items um, that brands spend a lot of marketing dollars on creating. Um, and you're gonna be able to create some really great looking content uh, pretty easily for your brand here and your flash sale. So stuff, take it away. All right, cool. Let's um, head back to the dashboard. And go back to the main menu. And the video maker is also under the marketing tool. Um, as Liat said, videos come in all sizes and shapes. Um, you can do a lot. Yeah, you can have agencies doing it for, the, for you. Um, but before you spend big, I would uh, test engagement and, and the performance with videos. And so let's, let's go with announcing a sale um, and, and edit this template. Cool, let's customize it. Um, and one more thing with video, you'll see that it takes a little bit longer um, for the system to create. Videos are heavy um, on, on the creation part and the rendering takes a little bit of time. Um, but we'll try to uh, show you some how easy it is. And then uh, when you spend the time uh, and invest uh, in, in research and understanding what your audience might react well to, um, you do it yourself. So again, here you can, for each scene, you can have a specific text um, that will run on the images. And let's go with 50% and our Halloween sale is here and uh, shop now. And again, um, good URLs lead to good sales. Um, all right, so in essence, let's go and add uh, a few more images um, from uh, our media library. Let's go with, um, I don't know, something that is pretty cool. I kind of like these kids and um, with the masks, let's add them to the video. And let's drop this more generic kind of thing and focus mostly on our images. And so let's upload a few more. So Asaf, while you're doing that, we got a question that says, can you add your own images to the video maker? So you absolutely can. That's what Asaf is doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, he's using images that he used on his website. So it's the media gallery attached to his website. Um, but if you see on the upper left there, you have upload media. So he could upload some more if he wanted. Um, for now, we're going to use these. Not only you can, you really should. And, and uh, it's always better to show your brand and not, uh, you know, I mean, Wix does offer a wide library, but uh, if you want to, people to connect the visuals with your brand, it should be your images. And let's go with uh, this kid with the mask. And and uh, maybe one more. And let's go with this one. All right, now that I feel I have enough of my uh, branding in place and good images, let's move to the next one. Here, um, first choose a layout. I think that's the most important thing. We'll go with Square as we're uh, focusing on um, Facebook and Square videos perform well there. Another thing is since this is Halloween, let's change sort of the color palette a little bit to, you know, this pumpkin kind of color. Um, and in terms of which of those video styles, I'll go with kids because this is what my product aligns best with, but definitely check every one of them so um, you can find the right one for you. Again, hitting next and then uh, listen to these checks uh, and, and try to see which one works best with the images. I'll go with bright sparks because I love sparks and people love things that are bright. Uh, so I'll choose this one. Uh, I'll also admit that I've listened to all of them and 
today. So <laughs> I know what to choose that goes well with the images that I've chosen. Uh, and here again, the business info, super critical. Don't make any rookie mistakes here of sending them to the wrong place or giving the wrong phone number. If you're um, putting that information out, make sure um, the tagline is there um, and that everything leads them to your flash sale because you really want to hit them um, on every opportunity that you can. And let's do apply and preview. This, as I've said, is going to take a minute, Liat. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll take the opportunity to entertain you, Asaf, with some questions um, from our uh, attendees today. Um, so uh, somebody asked us about email timing, but I think we answered that one. Um, okay, so then somebody asked when they create um, a coupon, how do they ensure that each person can only use that once. So I think you showed that stuff. Do you wanna give yes, a quick recap? Yes, we showed it a little bit earlier. As you choose your coupon, you can limit it to a single use per user. Um, it's a checkbox there. So just uh, be sure to, to check it. And, and uh, as I've said, with flash sales, because um, we went with 50% off, there's not a lot of profitability left. We have to be sure that people don't take you know, too big of an advantage of that. And so uh, limiting it to one time per user is a smart move. It all depends on, on you know, the coupon and, and your messaging. There are some deals that you can make and have people buy over and over again. Uh, know your audience, know your products. It's the same thing. Um, I'll save and share, by the way, back to the video. As you can see, it's ready. Um, cool. Let's give it a second here. Um, maybe there's another question. Yeah, got there, there is another one going back to your coupons. So can you implement a coupon that allows customers to get a certain product free if they purchase another one? So yeah, we had the buy one, uh, get however many free option there right. in the coupon. So um, you guys, we, we'll send out the recording um, of this workshop so you can feel free to run through everything again and pause um, and take a look at what a stuff is doing on the screen um, so you can really follow along. Right, so back to the video maker, download the file, always good to have a hard copy of it. And we're gonna share it on Facebook, but you can obviously upload it um, to YouTube as well. And our Halloween sale is here. Um, visit Hip Hip Shop for more. I like it, it's good enough for me to uh, move forward and again with video since you have the video maker you don't have to be very selective on you know you're not paying an agency thousands of dollars to make that video test out a few and the ones that you really like those are the ones you know you can uh, revisit that notion and and pay an agency to take it to the next level so you can you know get a lot of roi uh, on spending and, and spend a lot on the flash sale drive a lot of traffic to your store get a lot of sales. Um, so let's do upload now. Um, again, with the integration, it takes a minute. Let me go um, for a second and see if the video is ready. So it's still, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's still the social post we did a little bit. We will have a notification uh, for the page managers when the video is ready. It typically takes up to 10 minutes. Um, cool. So uh, while we wait for that, Asaf, um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll carry on with the deck and we'll come back to take a look at our live video shortly. Um, so I think the final piece, um, which is for us always the most fun piece, and I hope for you all as well, um, is tracking and measuring um, the performance of what you've been doing. So. We're sharing here an example of what your analytics dashboard might look like um, when you are running flash sales. So of course, what we're gonna be looking for um, in our sales over time graph or our revenue over time graph is these amazing peaks. Um, I can't imagine anything better for an online store owner than to see that in their dashboard. Really seeing those peaks coming along, it means your flash sale has been working, um, the customers came in in those really short windows um, and they bought the product and they enjoyed the sale. 
Um, you can look at your analytics in uh, many different ways. So you can view it um, based on the traffic, how many people are visiting your site, of course, based on the sales. You can look at um, what are your most popular products, um, how people are shopping, like time of day, all of that kind of stuff. So um, Asaf will show you uh, where you can find the analytics in your dashboard. Um, so it's easy for you guys to do um, and track everything that you have going on. Yeah, and I think it's uh, yeah, it's not only a suggestion, it's really critical for you guys to know everything you have, um, everything that is happening on your store. So on Wix, you go to analytic and report, analytics and reports. Um, let's go here, there's a breakdown there. Um, and obviously first look at sales um, over time by item, obviously this, this store, uh, you know, as a mock-up store, so we don't really have sales, but uh, yeah, let, let's do a workshop on analytics. I think that would be very valuable for them. Uh, down, as you go from sales, you'll have more traffic reports and, and there's a bunch of them. You should definitely look at the vice and first time versus returning visitors. Many insights there on, on what to do. Uh, referrals by category, so you should know where the traffic coming from. Is it from Facebook, from Instagram, uh, organic traffic? Those are all um, things you traffic. need to know. Absolutely. Things to know by heart so you can optimize um, where you're offering a flash sale uh, and in general, how to work and how to promote your store on a daily basis. Very cool. So except to your point, uh, the team are letting me know um, that we do have a workshop planned um, for analytics coming up. So make sure that you're going in to either our e-commerce school page or into our Facebook page um, and you'll get notified about when that's coming up so you can uh, register for that. And the team also told me that they're going to be asking people to vote for their um, preferred upcoming workshops um, at the end of the session. So if you're looking for something specific, please go ahead and let us know what workshops you'd like to be seeing. Um, and with that, I think Asaf, we're ready to open up to um, our full uh, Q&A session. So uh, I'm just going to run I through. I thought we kind of covered it throughout, but uh, let's take a few more. Right. We, we definitely covered a lot, um, but we'll take a couple more. Um, we got a really great one um, coming in um, that actually I think we could use uh, to sum up the session. Um, which is, uh, you go first and then I'll add if I have something, uh, maybe uh, maybe you'll do everything. Let's see. What's your best tip for holiday sales? Well, it's a good question. Uh, it really sums up everything. I will tell you um, the best thing. And I hope the music that I'm hearing from the outside doesn't come across too hard. There's like, we're at the Tel Aviv port and it's a happening place apparently. Uh, right now. In any case, when you do a holiday sale, um, one, you really have to know your audience and your offering. Um, know which holidays they're expecting. Some holidays are sort of for everybody, but some aren't. Um, I'm not sure Valentine's is right for all products, and I'm not sure that Halloween um, is the perfect one for yours. Uh, and the other thing is, look what you did the last time that um, you had Halloween sale. Uh, did it perform well? How did the audience react? And um, how did you do, if you if you ran a flash sale, how did you do in terms of fulfillment? How difficult was it for you? How many refunds you had? So look into everything that happened so you can uh, both know which products to offer and when, how to price them. And if you're still missing out on some of the information that you want, ask your users and, and your shoppers um, Make sure that you know you communicate with them and you ask them questions. And, and uh, many people will gladly provide that information because um, they'll they'll get a lot of value from you uh, once uh, they've given you this information. And, and also talk with people uh, in the supply chain, like the people who actually deliver the packages. They also know a lot, um, and, and they're pretty chatty from my experience. So. Um, it's a good opportunity to gain more information that other people tend to overlook. Very cool. So I think um, I'll kind of steal some of yours and end and, and with that, but I totally agree, like focus, focus, 
focus on your customer. They are absolutely your very best asset. So whatever that is, talking to them, looking at the data, um, engaging with them, giving them great service, um, remember that they will always be your, um, your best asset. So just in, invest in that. Um, so we'll sum up here with some of the links. Um, the team's also been sharing them in the chat. Um, so feel free to click on through. Um, we have our Wix e-commerce community. Um, that's a forum group. We have our Facebook group that we'd love for you to join. Um, we have some great holiday season tips with a full action plan where you can learn a lot more about how you can run your holiday season uh, promotions and sales. Um, and we thank you all very, very much for joining us today. Thank you, Asaf. I had a good time. Yeah, it was fun. And people are also asking to see the video that I created. Um, so. You know, give me another second before we sign off and let me show them uh, my creation. I can't think I, of a better way to end this workshop than for yes, you to all yes. enjoy a soft creative skills. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and especially since we didn't preview it as we were uh, chasing the deadlines here. However, it is now ready to be played. So. Wow, that is just absolutely stunning, Asaf. Um, Asaf can share second, the link yeah. to this beautiful Facebook page with you all. So if you would like to go and view his talented work in person, um, you are very welcome. Yeah, and just remember this took us, what, five minutes? Uh, and it's, you know, it's not pixel perfect, but it's good enough to start. Invest some time in those videos and you'll see more shoppers arriving at your doorstep. Totally. So um, final questions there. Yes, the session is recorded. We'll be emailing it to you all. Please visit the e-commerce school, the Wix e-commerce school for recordings of all our workshops um, where you can always find this one too. Um, and we wish you all a very Happy Halloween and hopefully very happy Halloween flash sales. <laughs>